With that, the college football playoff has been set, and I'm angry about it. Mm. I am very much angry about it. It was a slap in the face <laughs> to all of us. So okay. this is the finals. The top. This is the top ten. So it went Iowa State at ten, Georgia at nine, Cincinnati at eight, Florida at seven, Oklahoma at six. Texas A&M at five, Notre Dame four, Ohio State three, Clemson was two, and Alabama was the number one team, as Mm -hmm. expected. Coastal Carolina was at 12, and they're 11 and 0. Cincinnati's undefeated at 9 and 0, and they're number eight. And then Ohio State six and 0, and Alabama's 11 and 0. This tells me that the way that the college football playoff is set up it's not about actual results. It's about more so reputation and then kind of results-ish, mm-hmm. but more so reputation. Ohio State only played six games, and I get based upon their circumstance. It makes sense. They were Big team was taking more precautions than anybody else. Can't knock them for that, and they do look like they're one of the best teams in the country. Mm-hmm. Being 6-0, and oh, that's cool. What bothered me is the fact that Notre Dame is still in the top five, top four. <laughs> Notre Dame beat Clemson in overtime. Uh, when Trevor Lawrence didn't play. Mm-hmm. They come back and play Trevor Lawrence this time and gets destroyed 34-10. to 10. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if any of y'all played college football on the PlayStation or the Xbox back in the day, NCAA football, but there was always a rule set up in the way they always did rankings for the BCS. Uh-huh. When it came to the rankings, if it's the number two versus number three, which this Clemson game was for them and Notre Dame, if the number two and the three, if it's a blowout, mm-hmm. you drop six spots min- minimum. Mm-hmm. Minimum six spots. Sometimes far further, depending on how bad you get blown out. If it's close, if it's like a point game, then you usually drop two spots. Mm-hmm. That's fair. That's a fair way to drop it. Notre Dame should not be in the college football playoff at all. So you would take them out and put in Texas a and I put in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Since they played nine games, they're undefeated. Mm-hmm. Give them a chance. So here, and the other thing with it is the complaint I get. I get the the take of no one cares about the group of five. No one cares about the smaller schools. No one really cares about them. But why do we have a system set up if there's never a, a there's not there's not a single avenue or even a chance for them to even get into the playoffs to play for a championship? Like they have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Not one year, not two years, <laughs> not even three. They have to be perfect for almost 10 years before they're even respected enough because within that 10-year period, guess what happens? They move to another conference. Mm-hmm. Con- another conference uh, swoops them and, and brings them in to where they can get more legitimate. That's the only avenue you have into the college football playoff, and it's ridiculous. And what makes it even tougher for these small schools is, is if a small school like Coastal Carolina and Cincinnati, if they go undefeated again next year, guess mm-hmm. what's going to happen? The exact same thing. That's one, but you know what else is going to add to that piece? Their coach is going to lead to a bigger school, a bigger program, so they actually have an opportunity. So basically, these group of five schools are just training ground, training wheels mm-hmm. for coaches to move up into a SEC, a Big Ten, a Pac-12, or a, uh, or a Big 12 team. That's basically what they're doing, mm-hmm. which makes it even more pathetic. They're not giving them a chance, and that kills me mm-hmm. that Cincinnati sh- – I feel like Cincinnati should be in there so they can get blown out by Alabama. Let them get the brakes beat off of them. Why do we want to watch Notre Dame get the brakes beat off of them? Like, no different than we watched Alabama beat the brakes off Michigan State a few years ago. That was warranted because Michigan State was undefeated. They deserve to be there and get their brakes beat off of them. Why do we? Why aren't we going to let Cincinnati get their brakes beat off of them? They deserve that opportunity too. Well, I got two takes on this. Uh, the first is I was never truly against the BCS system. I was against only – having the top two play for the championship and not having some version of a playoff, whether it's four teams, eight teams, whatever. Because I like the BCS system. It, I guess part of the reason why it was created was to keep us from scenarios such as this that are human created, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I never really had a problem with the BCS system. I just feel like they should have had more playoff spots. Now, with Notre Dame being in this number four spot, as opposed to Texas A&M or opposed to Cincinnati, I can look at this without much emotion because I'm, I watch college football, but I wouldn't call myself a college football fan. So certain things don't bother me that would bother someone 
who loves college football, who knows the history of college football, and who has more of a personal investment in it. I'm a professional sports guy, you know, NFL, NBA, MLB. So with this, it doesn't bother me because I see exactly what they're doing. And this is something I've been saying for several years now. What people have to understand about these, these, uh, the, BC, the championship playoff is that it is a television show. Yes. It is their three biggest television shows of the year. So what better brand to put in this number four spot than a brand that is international like Notre Dame? Texas A&M, very regional. Cincinnati, very regional. But if you get but the advertising that you can sell for having Notre Dame in a game against Alabama is exponentially more than these other teams. Should they should it be governed by that? No. But that's our economy. That's how television and the system works. So that's what this was about. They were going to find a way to put Notre Dame in this game if they had lost 54 to 10. So it wasn't about fairness. Yes, this committee's being unfair. And I think you're right about Cincinnati. I wouldn't. Heck, Texas A&M or Cincinnati, whoever it was. But they understand that this is about the bottom line. And this is what this these top four teams are there to serve. Because outside of, let's say, a Michigan or an OU, you have your four biggest brands in college football right now. So it's no coincidence. We probably should have seen this coming weeks ago, and this is what they did. No, I saw it as soon as Notre Dame beat Clemson. Because <laughs> right now Clemson is one of the bigger brands at, at, over the last 10 years. Yeah. They, they have grown into that. So, yeah, it was going to be one of those four, and then you're going to have Oklahoma probably as the, the, the next option, which mm-hmm. is why they were six, mm-hmm. and hence the reason why Oklahoma has made the college football playoff every other year, specifically because they're Oklahoma. They're the mm-hmm. brand, but they also do enough winning to get to that point. Yes, My issue is, is – and you're right, this is all about – it's a money grab and it's all about what the show will look like. Mm-hmm. No one wants to watch Alabama throttle Cincinnati, but I promise you no one wants to watch no uh, Alabama throttle Notre Dame either. We know that there's a gap in talent, but if you want to, there's, I mean, there's two ways to really fix this problem. Right. One, make an avenue for a group of five teams to get to the championship because then coaches will, will be, be more likely to, well, We'll have an incentive to stay at said school because that's what's going to happen. Like I said, if Cincinnati goes undefeated next year, mm-hmm. hell, honestly, their coach is probably gone this year. There's going to be mm-hmm. a few jobs open at some big schools. Auburn is open right now. Uh, Tennessee might end up being open. There's a lot of big schools that are going to have some openings. Texas might have an opening. You, we don't know in the next year or two. Uh-huh. So if these big programs – USC, they technically could use a coach. They may have an opening. There's going to be these jobs available that these group of five teams are going to end up going to go take. The other piece is if you really want to spread it out, start paying the players. Let <laughs> boosters write them checks. Because if you think about it, what's more financially beneficial to you? Being the third five-star corner on an Alabama team, mm-hmm. endorsement-wise, or being the top corner at Cincinnati? Mm-hmm. Which one's going to benefit you more? Cincinnati, because you're the number one guy. You're the top corner. So right. you're going to be the one that's going to get those deals. You're the ones that the boosters are going to pay to get there. Right. Alabama's got a, got a stable. So they're like, yeah, I mean, you know, you can come here. We'll pay you a little something, something, but you know, mm-hmm. you know. And the thing is, is coming out of high school, if you got the talent, you got the talent. It doesn't right. matter. I, mean, I think this is, I mean, it's just one of the symptoms. I don't know if this is evidence of the biggest system of college football, just the problem with how it's structured without having any central leadership with certain schools, probably having too many scholarships to where if they didn't have as many, some of those five-star players who end up being a third string cornerback at Ohio state will go somewhere where they can start, make that team better and more competitive. And this is part of the reason why I refuse to invest my emotions into college football because the structure is so screwed up. It's never going to be what it truly should be. Yeah, it never will. And that's unfortunate. Put it like this. Just mm-hmm. be a fan of one of these teams mm-hmm. in the top five. Top, well, actually, top ten. We'll go, we'll go top ten except for Iowa State. I don't know how long they're going to last. Their, their coach, is, he's going to leave Iowa State and go to a bigger program. I bet you Texas might throw some money at him and try to pull him down there. Why not? He's winning. He right. can recruit and bring people in. That's what's important. It's winning games, bringing in recruits and winning. That That's that's where we're at a, a standstill with uh, college football.